Welcome into Sports Talk with Theo Dorsey. South Georgia, let's talk sports. There will be several new faces on the sidelines on Friday nights this fall. When new coaches come to town, there's generally a meet and greet or press conference. Well, here at WALB, we want to welcome them in the Sports Talk way. And our first victim is Larry Harold. Harold is, the new, is new to America's Sumter, but no stranger to South Georgia-style living. The Panthers' new head football coach got his start at Macon County down in Mount Montezuma in 2012. America's is his fourth head coaching job since, and he said it's been an opportunity that he couldn't pass up. Harold will be taking over for Eric Soliday, who spent the past three seasons in Sumter County and leaves Harold with a Region 1 Quad A championship winning team. Now, in the midst of his spring practice schedule, which is pretty busy, I was out there, saw it myself. Harold took some time to come on down to Albany and join us on Sports Talk. So with that, Coach Harold, welcome in, and I'm glad you made the trip down. I know you're a busy man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's been uh, running back and forth the last two weeks. Uh, I was in Dallas a couple of weeks ago for the draft with mm -hmm. Roquan Smith and then had a fly back in town uh, for a meet and greet that Monday. Uh, and then we started practice that Tuesday and it's, my head is spinning. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. And, of course, and that's leading up to the spring game. You can give a quick announcement for where people can see their first look at the Panthers. Uh, you got a spring game Friday night, right? Yeah, uh, come on out Friday night to uh, Robinson Franklin Stadium, uh, 7 p.m. We'd be taking on the Southwest, making Patriots. Uh, ought to be a great game. I had a chance to play them last year at Central. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat up on us pretty good. And uh, Coach Dupree and I have a good relationship, and he wanted it. was looking for a spring game, and I was looking for one, and he just mutually agreed to come on down. And it ought to be some good fun and get a chance to see what our kids have learned these last two weeks. They'll be, they'll be definitely excited to see that. But first, one thing that they want to see back home is your coaching resume and where you've been before you got here to South Georgia. So let's take a look at that. And I want to start off when you were an offensive coordinator. Now, you're a Baton Rouge native of Louisiana. You started off, and you're going to have to help me with this name right here. Estruma High School. Estruma. <laughs> with a great Billy Cannon who won the, um, uh, uh, the Heisman, yeah. uh, played at LSU. Um, Award. Uh, we were very successful there. A uh, program that started out one and nine in 2001. When I got there, 2002 went 73, and uh, we were a perennial top five team mm. in a uh, 5A in Louisiana, which is big time football. Um, and so we were very successful there as an offensive coordinator. Actually, the guy that hired me out of college, Mr. Richard Oliver, mm. uh, is going to come on down and be my defensive coordinator. So uh. Uh, he came here for the meet and greet last Monday, excited about him, um, and he's my best friend. And the fact he wants to come over here and work with us, it, it's amazing. It's that's, amazing. That's a blessing. Yes, that's a sir. blessing. And that was your first offensive coordinator stop. You had several more here. You got Scotlandville, you got Campbell High, Riverdale High, and then finally, Let's take a look at your first head coaching job. We got them all on there now. <laughs> Macon County in 2012, where you had a, a pretty nice run and won a region championship in 2014. We'll yes, get to sir. some of that. Brunswick High was your next stop. Two years in Brunswick as the head coach. One year stop in Central as the uh, Central and Macon as the head coach. And then uh, and I spoke to uh, Coach Price, the athletic director at, at America Sumter, and I asked him what was the biggest thing that, that sold you on Harold, and he said, man, the way that he's able to get kids exposure and try to get these young student athletes to the next level and get them looks at colleges. He said, you have already had plenty of college coaches come by. And that, that's another thing, and um, you know, just uh, the relationship that we've been able to build over the years um, at Macon County, I tell the kids, we had every power five school in America come through there, the little bitty Montezuma, and so uh, we're hoping to bring that same exposure we've had. Uh, over 20 to 25 coaches the last two weeks, um, and they're really excited about our kids. Like I tell them, we have a good junior class. One of our kids is here tonight. You'll talk to him, uh, KJ Harvey. I tell everybody he's the biggest secret in Georgia. I think he's one of the top, easily top five quarterbacks this year. He get a chance to show his stuff. Uh, but we have a 2020 class that is loaded, yeah. um, and so we're excited about him. We're young. We lost a big group last year, 22 seniors. Uh, the biggest of their offense was number five, Kobe Lewis. He took away 22 touchdowns. 1,800 yards of offense, so we got to replace that. And on the Divas side of the ball, they, we lost about eight to nine starters. So we're young, but we have the talent, but we just got to cultivate and coach them up. Right, and I know that for you, we looked at all of those different stops among, along your career that got you to this point. And the people that support you through all of those moves, which I'm sure was a lot, yeah. is your family. So I want to give a quick shout out to your family before we got into too much <laughs> into too much football talk. I want to give a shout out to the Harold family, and you can yeah. name them off if you'd like, and and tell me how they've been uh, really the foundation for you to keep you through all of these different stops you've been making. Well, of course, my beautiful wife Danielle. We've been married now. Uh, will be it'll be nine years, July 19th. 
Uh, that's my life. That's my world. She gave me four beautiful kids, uh, Larry the uh, third, my only daughter, Lamaya. Uh, I have a son that's three years old, Levi, and a 15-month-year-old uh, uh, named Liam. Um, and my wife is, is a football wife. She's crazy. And uh, when this job came open and uh, Mr. Price called me for an interview, I jumped in the air and she, <laughs> I said, are you ready to move again? And she said, hey, if you want to do it, anything to make you happy. So it's good to have that type of support. I have a football wife. She don't mind packing up. And she always tells me everything's already by the door. <laughs> she be ready to go. So, uh, you know, but I think, um, you know, people say, Coach, why do you move around? I'm led by God. And when God tells me it's time to move, I move. Uh, and the thing is, I think he took me to all the different spots to prepare me for this spot. Um, America's always been a job. I've always had to have the corner of my eye. Even though I was at Macon County, it was open several times, but I didn't feel like I was quite ready. And with the stops I've made, I feel like I was ready. Just opportunity I couldn't pass up. Um, you know, you're in the heartland of South Georgia. The kids love football. The community loves football. And I have a great administration, a great superintendent, a great board of education that loves football. And I feel very supporting it. I'm excited ready to get started and this is a bit of a different takeover for you because in the past you've had a lot of reclamation projects yes what is it like now to be taking over you know the defending region 1-4-A champs and, and this team that Eric Soliday's passed off well like I said it's a lot of talent um the one thing that I will say and I'll tell you about uh KJ Harvey he threw for over 2,000 yards last year 18 touchdowns is uh, I had a quarterback that broke the state record in Kahari Lane mm -hmm. and I had been coaching him since he was in the eighth grade uh and KJ has the same mantra, he has a strong arm, makes quick decisions, is real smart and cerebral. And so coming to a situation like that, I've taken over, like you said, a lot of re re reclamation projects. Mm -hmm. But coming in, the kids know how to win, they expect to win. And so it makes your job easier as a coach. And uh, it's been fun so far these past two weeks. I saw you guys had a lot of fun at the spring practice today. How's the spring gone? I know y'all are uh, enjoying yourself as well as kind of getting some of those fundamentals in place. Huh? Yeah, just uh, just a little bit of different uh, pace. I'm um, a fast-paced coach. I like to practice at a different pace. So the coaches and the kids are learning, you know, how we like to practice. But they're having fun. They're learning. Uh, there's just so much going on, Theo. Uh, but the kids are enjoying it. They're loving the college coaches. We had uh, Albany State head coach come out yesterday, which, you know, enlightened the practice. You came out today. Uh, coaches have been coming in and out. Uh, they like the some of the changes we've made. And uh, it's been good so far. So we we're in the honeymoon stage. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I want to, before we go to break, I want to uh, ask you about the draft night experience. For you as a coach, uh, seeing Roquan Smith get picked eighth by the Chicago Bears, a guy you coached three years at Macon County, three of his years. What was that like to be out there in Dallas and see his big day and witness it firsthand? First of all, for me and my wife, is humbling because, you know, we almost raised him like our own son. Um, and so he, he has a great supportive family. And just the fact that he felt like I was important enough in his life to for me to be there because he felt like I was, me and my wife was a part of his process of getting to that point was, was humbling, but it's life changing. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the people you're in there with, you know, I've always watched the draft growing up, but to be behind doors and seeing how it's laid out, it was, it was really a blessing. And the ultimate was when he got that phone call that he picked from the Chicago Bears. I mean, Man. we just couldn't do nothing but hug him and almost broke down in tears because he's been talking about that since we, since 2012, when he was just a sophomore of his dream of playing the NFL. And I never would imagine that kid, I knew he had a chance to go to the NFL, but to, eighth pick eighth. It, it was mind-blowing it was mind-blowing <laughs> and what is it i mean what is it about this game what do you expect from him now at the next level this guy was a uh, all, consensus all-american buckets award-winning sec defensive player of the year I mean, what do you expect from him at the next level i mean what i saw at georgia what i saw in high school he he, he was a, a freaking high school the big the best attribute about him theo is his sideline and sideline game but nobody yeah. i've ever seen play can get from one hash to another like he does and i expect to do the same thing uh the chicago bears came down monday to interview me and asked me and with the, he's exceeded even my expectations. You know, winning the butt kiss and, you know, Georgia had their best season since 1980. And that kid was the face of that movement um, because not just of his football, but his character. He grew into a leader um, and was a spokesman. And people love the fact that he had no red flags off the field. Mm. Uh, he stays out of trouble, stuff like that. And so it's just an honor to the type of kid he is, the type of family he comes from. And um, it's what we hope to pour into these other young men. It's not as make it easy as a coach because people, you know, I've had 
past coach kids that called me and said, Coach, man, we should have listened. You know, <laughs> and so now the kids I'm coaching now at America, they're already excited. Now they see us at the draft and they're extra excited because they know I'm not going to do anything to hurt them. Everything that I, I'm telling them and pouring into them is only to make them better. I'm a hard coach, but I love hard as well. And everything that we do, I'm going to push them to the ultimate. That's big. That's big. Well, I'm excited to see what you do out here in America. <laughs> and also, I'm excited to play you in trivia. You said you're, you're, you're a hard oh, coach. Lord. We'll see how hard you, you can go in <laughs> trivia. Theo versus everyone right after the break. Welcome back to Sports Talk. I'm John Barron. He's Theo Dorsey. Coach Larry Harrell, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Mm-hmm. Coach, we are hoping right now, we're happy to see you here in Albany as well as you're going to be doing great things over in America. And we're hoping right now we can give you your first win here in Albany no. as you hopefully can take down Theo here for your trivia. <laughs> Theo versus everyone. As you know, Coach, all right, so the rules are, will be nine questions. Okay, the first three, I will give you the option for the answer. The last six, you will have to provide me with the answer. Now, the last six, if he does not get it right, you have the opportunity to steal, ring the bell, person with the most into the container wins. Everybody ready? Let's do it. All right, question number one. What team has won the Super Bowl three times in the 90s? The 49ers? Oh, that's, that's the Cowboys. Yes, it is. Let's go. Let's get it. That's Texas, right? I'm from Texas now. He moves fast. (laughs) He's learned over over the years. (laughs) You know what? He can just kind of guess after he gets it first. (laughs) All right, question number two. Who holds the best rookie quarterback passer rating in NFL history? I'm going to say Dak Prescott. That is correct. Uh, uh, It was originally, um, goodness gracious, uh, Redskins quarterback. RG3. I was, I was about to oh, say. His name Which escaped one? me the second I said it. I was like, shouldn't have gone with this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the last multiple uh, choice question. Ready? Question number three. What NFL team has operated with the same logo and has been in the same location? I'm going to say uh, Chicago Bears. I got to say that. No, it's Green Bay Packers. Oh, man. You got to think. The they, have been, they have been bought out by, uh, by the city. So they've okay. been there for a while. Okay. All right. This was, that was the last multiple choice question. The first one right here. Question number four, last, one of the last two before we go to break. Okay. Question number four, which NFL team features only one logo on the side of their helmet? Pittsburgh Steelers. That is correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you let me get it. <laughs> See, you started catching on, so you're just ringing. And no, no. All right. 32 options. What is the question? <laughs> All right, last question before we go to break. What NFL team drafted Brett Favre? Oh, Atlanta Falcons. Uh, that is correct. Okay, I got Look, you. He was standing there. He was standing there, right? He was yeah, his finger on the tray, ready to go, just like, just one tap. To. Well, we right now are tied at two apiece, but there's much more action coming right here on Trivia when we come back. Welcome back to Trivia. Right now we are all tied up. All right, so right now we still have a possible five chances for points, but four questions left. You guys ready? All right, let's go. Question number six. What position has won the Super Bowl MVP trophy the most? Quarterback. That is correct. Come on, man. Yo, be, uh, why you, be, get, you yeah. got mad at him? I don't know that. Oh, man. <laughs> he said he should have gotten it My first. wife could have got that one right. Why? Did you get the point? Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Question. All right, all right, all right, all right. Question number seven. What team did Adam Vinatieri kick a 41-yard game winner against to win Super Bowl That's 38? Too That's too easy. Oh, God, yeah. Whisper it to me. Let me see if it's too easy. <laughs> I'm not whispering anything to you. Uh, Colts. That's wrong. No. Oh, that was, oh man, I messed it. Um, I know that one. That was the first Super Bowl they won, the Rams. No. Oh, the, oh okay. No, no, no. Carolina Panthers. Panthers. That's my team. That was, that was in Houston. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm tripping. I don't know why I, I said close. He did the same thing to Rams. To be man. honest with you, I was tri- I was tripping. Yeah. I mean, I didn't hear the my question. My wife correctly. could have gotten that question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. This guy has jokes. I'm with right, you. Ready? <laughs> still three points possible. Okay, so coach, you still can all right. You, you can win this one. I don't know why I stumbled on that, but be all right. Yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> the question number eight: What equipment were players required to wear for the first time in 1943? Oh, helmets. Yes. Did you not know you were going to ring that? No, <laughs> I, like, I, I can't. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Look, hey, hey, you gotta, whoa. <laughs> all right, last question, all right? We it's are all marbles. tied up. I'm just going to get ready. You guys ready? Okay, gotcha. This is for two points. Question number nine. 
Which college has the most former players in the NFL Hall of Fame? Woo! The U. My wow. Man. All about the U. Did you rank it? Do you, I rank it. I don't know, man. That's These guys just both rank it at the same time, but it's not the U. It's so not. we both lose. <laughs> so you both lose. That's great. Back to back weeks where we are all tied up. It was Notre Dame and Southern Cal. Both of them were tied at 12 apiece. Wow, I'd never have guessed that. I, yeah. I wouldn't have either wow. when I looked it up. Wow. The U, because yeah, the, the U, U was, they came on a little too late to have that many in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, it was kind of messed up. Well, that's great. So uh, I've been doing my <laughs> job really well lately, guys. We were all tied up again job. for the second week in a row. A good tie. A good solid tie. That's okay. Well, well, we'll <laughs> good job. <laughs> We'll have more of Coach Harold as well as the person that's going to be starting for him at quarterback right after the break. Welcome back to the show. Following our tie, uh, we have Coach Larry Harold of America Sumter High School and his upcoming junior or senior quarterback next senior, year. Senior. Senior. Kirsten K.J. Harvey. Welcome to the show. And um, I, I just want to let you know that I, I let him tie me just so y'all's <laughs> confidence will be good going into the spring game. He won't mess you up. Uh, <laughs> America's something two days away from their, their spring. Actually, their spring game Friday night uh, at home. They're going to be playing against Southwest Macon. And I, I first wanted to, I'm glad we got KJ here because he was a part of that region championship team uh, coached by Eric Soliday. And now you're about to lead a, a new team under a, a different coach. You'll be, you're dealing with the offense, right, calling plays? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you'll be under Coach Harold so yeah. far. You've been in the spring practices. What's, what's the vibe been like uh, out there in Sumter County? The whole team is excited. The city is excited. Like, he came in, had a great impact on us from the jump. And, like, we trust and believe in, in him. What's one of the biggest things? I know that the Roquan Smith effect has to be impactful. The, the success he's had, especially when, down there at Bacon County, what, what has been the most exciting thing for you as a player to see out of him that makes you excited to play for him? The trust that he has in us and, like, he believes that we can um, make it a good season. We can have a good season. So that's what I'm most excited about. That's big time. And you've already showed up. Like I said, when I, when I saw you in the office today, I said, man, I've seen you in the highlights. So I, I remember your name from the highlights. First thing Coach Harold says when, when, he, when I ask about you is, so you know that he can spin it. Yeah. So, so I got to ask you, Coach Harold, how do you plan on using uh, KJ and how do you plan on opening up the passing offense? Because I know last year was much more of a run-oriented team. Well, the thing is, like I said, you, you lose Kobe Lewis. Um, you lose A.J. Payne. That's a big part of offense. So the thing is that uh, we run a, a heavy RPO system, which I haven't been able to do since I've been at Macon County. Um, KJ is very smart, makes quick decisions. So a lot of the stuff he'll do, it'll be him looking at the defense and making a decision. Uh, he's going to run the ball a lot more this year. A lot of colleges have come by and asked him, Coach, can he run? We love the way he throws it. Uh, Air Force, uh, Albany State, a couple other schools. And so he's going to run the ball a little bit more. I told him uh, he's going to have to shoulder the load, and we'll go as far as, as that right arm carries. Right, so that's for, for you hearing that. I mean, I know he's already told you that, but hearing that, Where's your mindset at now thinking about that senior campaign? I have to stand out and I have to be a leader. I got to become more of a leader for the upcoming seniors, you know what I'm saying? Because I have a big role now. I have a big role to fill. Now, what's your unique styles of leadership are different between different people? I know as quarterbacks, you got to be the signal caller. You got to be the, the guy that kind of demands uh, the huddle and, and, and does things like that. What's your style of leadership uh, down there? I'm vocal. Yeah. And I lead physically. I lead by example. But, like, more, more vocal is what I'm working on. And I know this year it'll be different. Uh, you're doing the RPOs, you're doing a little more passing. I mean, how much does that excite you as a quarterback? Because I know last year with a lot of the Wildcat, a lot of that kind of just didn't allow you to kind of open up and show people what you got. It gives me a chance to use my mind like, and make reads. That's what I, I really like about it. Yeah, and the thing with him, um, Theo, is that, uh, he's about a 3-4 student, 3.4 um, student. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, has great grades and so very cerebral. And that's the thing when I first met him, uh, I talked to him on the phone. Um, he texted me right after uh, he heard I got the job and we talked and I told him I'm excited and ready to go to work. Um, this is not about Coach Harrell, it's not even about the coaches. This is those guys' team and he's going to have to be the face of the movement. Just as I, I said, Roquan was the face of the Georgia movement. So my thing is, you know, I'm going to give you the tools and then on Friday night, I'm going to hand him the keys and he got to drive us home. That's right, and he'll be doing a lot of that for you guys this year. I want to take a quick look at your uh, the schedule. If we could pop that up. There it is. We'll throw that from Twitter. And we got some teams on there. One of them that stands out September 7th against Lee County. That game's going to be at home, correct? No. Yeah, it's at home. It's at, at home at against a defending state champion at 6A level. I yes, mean, sir. What, what's the, I, know you, I know all of them are big for you, but that one's got to be a big one for you guys to try and uh, show, you, show people what you got in the home opener. Well, the thing is, is that um, – 
uh, playing six eight ball at Brunswick, I know what to expect. You know, Coach Fabrizio does a great job, defending state champion. We played coffee before, so I know what we have to do. We have to be physical. Um, it's gonna this summer's gonna be very important. A lot of my coaches are transitioning, so us coming together, playing them that early, uh, you know, we're gonna have to be able to stand the test of times. Um, but I'm excited about the challenge. That's why I came to South Georgia to meet those challenges. Well, perfect. We'll be watching you guys along the way. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And y'all, thanks for watching. Have a good night.